Good afternoon. I'm Edward Berger, Chair of the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, and I've been asked to serve as moderator for this important Pi E debate. At the dawn of humanity, the sun rose up, which really isn't that surprising since it was the dawn. Uh, then a lot of stuff happened, blah, blah, blah. And a few thousand years later, the number one was discovered and was quickly followed by the discovery of two. Once they moved beyond two and just a little past three, two numbers fell into our ancient ancestors' laps. When they glanced down at their laps covered by fig leaves, they were staring at E and Pi and the world would never be the same again. Everyone knows and agrees that E and pi are famous numbers. We all know that they are not whole numbers. Some of us know that they are not fractions. <laughs> and a few of us know that they are not the solutions to any non-trivial polynomial with integer coefficients. <laughs> now, despite all these negative traits, both pi and e have thrived. <laughs> but since those heady days of our fig leaf clad ancestors, a question has plagued humankind. Which is the better number, e or pi? This afternoon, as a service to all future humanity, we will settle this issue for once and for all. I'd now like to introduce our speakers. Our debaters are two mathematicians whose professional histories and career paths could not be more different. If they were part of a 24-hour period, one would be day, <laughs> the other night. Colin Adams earned a PhD in mathematics and then pursued postdoctoral work before arriving at Williams College in the 1980s. He has been here ever since, except for a number of sabbaticals in which he was a visiting professor at several institutions, including universities as far away as the West Coast. <laughs> professor Adams is a popular, award-winning teacher who has the one-of-a-kind talent of making mathematics fun. He is also a serious scholar with an impressive list of scholarly publications, including his extremely popular well-known book. Adams is a unique talent and I can honestly say one of the individuals that make my department such a special place. Tom Garrity on the other hand <laughs> earned a PhD in mathematics and then pursued postdoctoral work before arriving at Williams in the 1980s. <laughs> he has been here ever since, except for a number of sabbaticals, in which he was a visiting professor at several institutions, including universities as far away as the West Coast. <laughs> professor Garrity is a popular, award-winning teacher who has the one-of-a-kind <laughs> talent of making mathematics fun. He is also a serious scholar with an impressive list of scholarly publications, including his extremely popular and well-known book. <laughs> Garrity is a unique talent, and I can honestly say one of the individuals that makes my department such a special place. Let's welcome them both. Let's welcome them both. Professor Adams will be speaking on behalf of Pi, and Professor Garrity will be speaking for E. Each person will be given approximately seven minutes to argue their case, after which they'll be followed by an opportunity for a short rebuttal, followed by brief concluding remarks, and then an opportunity for the audience to cast its vote. A coin, fl a coin flip was used to decide uh, which of the two would speak first. Using a coin provided by Mel Slugbait, Colin Adams won the flip and will be our first speaker. Professor Adams. Thank you. Thank you. 
Let me begin by saying how honored both Professor Garrity and I are to be chosen to participate in this momentous occasion. And the two of us are humbled, truly humbled, to be chosen for this task from among all the incredible mathematicians in the world today. Yes, they could have chosen anyone, and they chose us. When the presidents of the learned mathematical societies from around the globe held their conclave in order to decide who they should select for this debate, the presidents of the American Mathematical Society, the Mathematical Association of America, the Canadian Mathematical Society, <laughs> the Association of Women in Mathematics, and let us not forget the Latvian Society of Actuaries, <laughs> they chose us. And I can only hope that we live up to this amazing honor. Second, I just want to say what a privilege it is to share the stage with my learned colleague, Professor Thomas Garrity. The incredible respect that I have for his voluminous knowledge and his intellectual acuity is exactly matched by my respect for the attitude that he engenders by his careful thought, his gentle wisdom, and his dignified deportment as a faculty member. <laughs> In fact, I know of no one who more embodies the essence of the teacher-scholar who thinks carefully before he acts and who realizes at all times that he is a role model to his students and carries himself accordingly. He is someone who treats his students as disciples, the college as his pulpit, and his very body as a temple, <laughs> which he maintains for all of us to worship. And I want to be very clear on this. I have never, ever put one iota of credit in the rumors about how the math department cookie funds disappeared <laughs> when Professor Garrity was chair of the Williams Math Stat Department. And I didn't doubt him for a moment when pets began to disappear from around his neighborhood <laughs> and his family was looking particularly well fed. And I will not even consider legitimizing the rumors about his not having made childcare payments to the starving children that he denies are his own by stooping to utter them out loud. No, I want this debate to be about the issues, not about the fact that he wears pink undergarments or that he often runs around the department with a pencil hanging out of his nose.